Hey there, welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews. My name is Alyssa, and this is my review for Black Widow, the movie. Spoiler <coughs> warning! If you have not yet seen it, I'm dropping this review like a month after it came out, so you should have seen it by now. But if you have not, you will be spoiled. Join me on the other side of this. All right, let's jump right on to my review of Black Widow, the movie. So I'm of two minds uh, for this film. Um, on the one hand, I enjoyed my experience at the film uh, every minute of it, actually. I, enjoy I laughed, I cried, all the cliches. <laughs> I just enjoyed every minute watching it, especially the experience of being at a theater again for the first time. And for me, I think it's been two years because I don't actually go out to the movie theaters that often. And I think the last time I might have gone out to the theater was for Spider-Man Far From Home. Um... I think, which was two years ago. <laughs> so um, that experience to me was amazing. And if you've only seen it on Disney+, Plus, I would recommend the theater if you're feeling safe about it, if you're vaccinated and all that, and you feel like it's safe for you, I would definitely recommend uh, the theater experience. Um, it was really nice. So I enjoyed that part of it, every part of it, being there, watching this movie, every minute of the movie it, itself. But <laughs> when you take a step back and look at the film as how it fits into the greater MCU, that's when it becomes problematic. And unfortunately, that's the way the MCU is structured. We can't look at each of these films just simply on an island or in the TV shows as well, any of the MCU projects. We can't look at them just on an island. We have to look at the greater picture and how it fits in. And um, it's a huge problem, in my opinion, um, though the film experience itself was quite enjoyable. So I think I'm going to start uh, with that. I'm going to start with uh, why I find that problematic. And then I'm going to talk about all the things I really love, the especially the characters, the character journeys, uh, a lot of the comedy in the film and all those sorts of things. But first, let me just expand on why I really hold just totally distraught about where this fits into the MCU because it really stands out like a sore thumb in Phase 4. It really, really should have been in Phase 3 uh, with a release date of 2016 or, or perhaps 2017, somewhere in between uh, Captain America Civil War and the Infinity War, uh, the first Infinity uh, film. Um, but uh, that's not where it came out. So it just... It just really sticks out like a sore thumb. The only connection that this film has to Phase 4 is that post credit scene, which appears to be setting us up for Hawkeye, which is a Phase 4 project. And there we are. We're connected to Phase 4. However, what if you just took that post credit scene out? You could put in any old post credit scene. You could have had an ant playing the drums, or you could have had whatever. You could have some, you know... Uh, Black Widow coming in with the Quinjet, which was the final scene of the actual film. That could have been a post credit scene, perhaps, setting up for the uh, Infinity Saga. Uh, that could have happened uh, if this had been released in 2016. So just one minor change, and it's easily released in 2016 or 17. And uh, sure, we've got three or four years of between appearances for Yelena, if that is the case. But so what? It's been 10 years between appearances for Darcy. So who cares? <laughs> I think that would have been totally acceptable, totally fine um, if they had done it that way. Now, I heard there was some executive up high up somewhere, not Kevin Feige, but somewhere else who was totally against having uh, a female lead in a superhero film, you know, because it won't sell tickets because I guess people don't like women or whatever. I don't know what the logic is, but then Wonder Woman proved that wrong, so they changed their mind. Um, but 
I don't know. Like, I don't know what they do at that point. After that's already happened, the ship has sailed. Now it's 2020. Um, probably with well, 2019, they're pro- when they're probably thinking of this film. Um, what do we do? Do we go ahead and do it anyways? I mean, Yelena does need to be introduced somehow. So that's true. I mean, but I think if they're going to still release it for Phase 4, they've got to find other ways to connect it to Phase 4. Um, one of the podcasts I listened to um, made a suggestion that they could have had a scene um, where uh, that takes place in between Infinity War and uh, Endgame where uh, Natasha finds out that... Um, Yelena has been blipped, and that gives you more power to uh, why she sacrificed herself, why she w- was so, so motivated um, to um, bring back everyone, because she has this attachment to people who have been lost. Um, that could have been something. Even that, I don't know if that would be satisfying enough for me, um, but... They needed to do more things like that to connect it to Phase 4. Um, once, you know, you're at the point where that ship has sailed, you can't ha- you can't go back in time. <laughs> uh, we don't have that, uh, you know, Ant-Man time travel technology going through the quantum realm that they had in Endgame. So we can't go back in time and release the film retroactively. So at this point, you have... if. If you still want to do it, you still want to introduce Yelena, you still want to give Natasha her own film, I do think you need to find other ways to connect it to Phase 4. That is my big, big complaint about this, that uh, it just feels so out of place, and it's hard for me to get past that. However, as I said, um, that has nothing to do with the actual experience of watching the film, which I quite enjoyed, so let me go ahead and switch gears and get into all that stuff. All right, so now switching over to things I did enjoy, I'm going to start with the characters, uh, which is where I often will start, because characters to me are the most important aspect of any film or a television show uh, as to whether I will enjoy it or not. If you have thin characters or very weak character journeys or very cliche character journeys, then I'm not as much interested Um, But if you have very strong characters and very strong character journeys, as the Black Widow film did, then I'm going to always enjoy that. So I'll start with, of course, Natasha. And um, I, I do think that this does add quite a lot to her character. In that way, I don't think this film was completely pointless or anything like that. Um... I uh, think it was really cool that they sort of took a very forgettable line from Avengers uh, when Loki mentions Drakov's daughter, and I think he mentioned a couple other things that were on red marks on her ledger, and um, they decided to really explore that, explore her past. And actually, you know what? I'm glad they did, because I was kind of always interested in her you know, jaded past. Like, the, she always seemed to express there were things she was feeling very guilty about uh, throughout all the films, but we only got vague, you know, uh, men- mentions of them. So I liked that they explored that, and I really uh, thoroughly enjoyed this story, this character arc uh, for this character we've been seeing since, you know, Iron Man 2, um, to really finally dive deep into it. Um, And see also um, the other people who are part of her life outside of the Avengers, before the Avengers, who really uh, affected her her life previously, with Yelena being the um, um, biggest of those. Obviously, and Yelena uh, is a great character outside of just simply being, you know, oh, this is uh, Natasha's adopted sister. It, you know, outside of simply feeding into Natasha's character, uh, she stands out on her own as well, um, which she will need to if she's going to continue to be a part of the MCU. Uh, so I thought it, that was really well done, and Florence Pugh um, is really amazing in this role. Um, She's great. Um, And the dynamics between Natasha and Yelena work really well. 
Uh, and actually their whole family. Like I really enjoyed this uh dysfunctional family dynamic because they're not they weren't never a true family um and in the flashback in the beginning natasha is very much aware what's happening and yelena doesn't seem to be as much she's all in on this fake family thing and um the dynamics are really interesting to watch especially when they come back uh later when they're all adults and they are still kind of acting like a family um even though they really weren't a true family so i found that to be all extraordinarily interesting um so the characters the our lead characters are really really good now as for the villains i think the villains were um a little lacking but but adequate um Drakoff, to me was you know adequate for what he was um i didn't think he was one of the best villains ever but he was fine um and the taskmaster i thought was very interesting i thought it was interesting that it ended up being um the twist there that it ended up being um Drakoff's daughter that natasha thought she killed um and uh, i know that there were a lot of marvel fans who were upset by that because they completely changed the character from the comics I have zero attachment to that character from the comics, so I don't care. <laughs> so that, I was not affected by that. I don't really care about any of that. Um, I understand if you had certain expectations uh, for this character uh, that the film didn't meet, then then I get, I understand that. Um, but just speaking from a personal standpoint, I didn't have those expectations, so I don't care. I enjoyed what they did with this character. Um, now, I also got to talk about David Harbour because uh, he's great. Um, I'm not a, the hugest fan of Stranger Things. Like, I've watched all three seasons, and I'm sure I'll watch season four, but eh. <laughs> I don't think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, as other people make it out to be. However, David Harbour is one of the strong suits of Stranger Things, and he is here too. He he has this talent for bringing a lighthearted touch to a very serious situation, um, which he does brilliantly in this film. Um, I absolutely enjoyed uh, him on screen, and I hope the Red Guardian comes back, and maybe we'll find out if he really ever fought Captain America. You know what? <laughs> I see theory videos and stuff about oh maybe it happened in a parallel in one of the you know the the parallel timelines or whatever, um, but maybe, but that's not what he was talking about. He was making up stories. I thought that was pretty clear, but we'll see. We'll see. Be interesting to see this character back in one form or, or another, regardless. So. Um, Love me some David Harbour. And in addition to him, um, Yelena provided some good comedy as well. I cracked up when she was making fun of um, Black Widow's, you know, superhero landing. <laughs> this is so funny. And then later in the movie, she tries to do it herself and screws it up. Uh, that was great. I mean, I think it's a little, you know, meta that she would even know about that. Like... How did, where did she see that? Like, I, was it on the news? Like, the, on the news they show her doing that? I don't know. But f f just forget about that. I just put that aside. I thought it was great. I thought it was funny. And there was a lot of good humor throughout this film. I thought the film did a very good job of balancing the humor with the more serious aspects of the film, um, with Natasha, you know, having this this red on her ledger, um, that she, this uh, right that she's trying to put... Uh, or this wrong that she's trying to put uh, right um, in her life. Um, this is, it was a very, you know, serious story, but uh, it was balanced well with humor. Um, and also, good action throughout the movie. I'm not a huge action person. That's not why I go to films. Um, but in a movie like this, I do expect to see it. So I thought they uh, did an excellent job with that as well. Um, so as I said... Pretty much everything about the actual experience of watching this film was quite enjoyable for me. Okay, now is the part of the video where I will give my rating for the film. So I give a rating between 1 and 10, with 1 being the absolute worst possible score and 10 being the best possible score. 
And so for Black Widow out of 10, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Unlike my brother, I do give 0.5s. It's usually when I can't decide between one number or the other. Is it a 7? Is it an 8? It's a 7.5. Um... I think it loses about a point and a half for not being released in 2016 or for not doing more to connect it uh, to Phase 4. Uh, that That's really uh, where it loses its point. Otherwise, I would have probably given it a 9. Um, if this had been released chronologically where it belongs, I think it would have been a 9. I really enjoyed this film. Um, as I just said, the characters, the comedy, the action, everything. Um, but because of where it's placed, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Still pretty strong, 7.5. Pretty good film overall. Very much enjoyed it. Okay, thank you so much for joining me for my review of Black Widow. I know it's like a month late, so thanks, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, you can also click on the link in the description below, or probably right over here somewhere. Um... Uh, you can find the link to my Loki review and also on my channel I have reviewed uh, retroactively Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision and also big big announcement I'm going to be doing weekly live discussions on Marvel's What If with my brother Mark from Enchantment of Eternity and a rotating third guest. The first one will be Saturday August 14th at 5 p.m. Pacific time 8 o'clock East Coast time and then from there on out they will always be on Thursdays with the week two being on Thursday August 19th at 6 o'clock West Coast, 9 o'clock East Coast. So please subscribe, 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 and check out everything on my channel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.